So I watched this video by Young Ant titled Compton T Flats Issues Public Warning. It's a green light. And it goes to what I said before when I first spoke about the issue of that mural being tagged up in Compton. And I explained how by making it a racial issue, they're gonna draw more people into it. Now, if that was in reverse and blacks were doing that to the Mexicans or Chicanos, whatever, then everyone would feel the same way. Everybody would be saying the same things about we need to come together, we need to, we need to go to war, we need to do all these things. So if you watch the video by Young Ant, I understand where he's coming from because I already spoke to it. Now, if your beef is with the Bloods, with Paru, then it should be kept there. Now, I understand the racial dynamic of that historical war being that Tortilla Flats is Chicanos and the Parus are Blacks. That it's, it's racial in itself. Regardless, regardless if it's gang related, it's a brown gang against Black gangs. That's racial in itself. But as he pointed out that there's innocent, there's innocent bystanders being caught up in this and there's innocent people being targeted, which makes it dead wrong. When innocent people are being targeted over a gang war that's historical, that people wanna make into a race war that's a problem. Now there has to be sensible people there in those communities to speak up and speak out against it. In particular, the Mexican mafia, because they can put a stop to it if they wanted to. Now, if it's gang related, it's, it's tortilla flats against Paru, that's between them. But when you make it about all blacks, then you make it a racial issue and it's no longer gang related. It's race related. Now, if you go, if you go out and you shoot and kill an innocent bystander, the kid, and they turn around and then start targeting kids, then what? Are they wrong? This vicious cycle has gone on for far too long. And the thing that gets to me is that, and I always ask this, where are the parents at? Why are so many youth being raised up in gangs? Where are the parents at? Where's the parenting? Where's the village to raise the child to become something other than? But see, that's another problem out there. It's gangland, it's the gang capital, and people there pride themselves on their gangs. That's what California is known for, gangs. And yes, people can deny the fact, but California has been most influential when it comes to <clears throat> the present day gang culture. Well, Chicago is having the greatest impact today with the drill, but Overall, it's been it's been those gangs and the proliferation of them gangs out of California that have that has that has made gang banging what it is today. And part of that problem is Hollywood, mainstream media. They monetize, then proliferated the problem so that they can make money off of it but I digress. Where are the parents at? Where's the elders in the community to stand up and take back their communities? 
Why is so few people having such a grave impact on any community? The number of people that are perpetuating the gang violence is 1% within every gang. Now, when you consider 1% of a gang, that's even far less than, that's like one one hundredth of a percentage point when you when you when you put that into the total number of people in the community who don't gang bang, who are not in gangs, who are innocent, who just want to live their lives. Why are these people bringing terror on their community? Where are the elders at to speak up? Where are their parents at? Why has this vicious cycle gone on for generation after generation after generation? Does no one care about their kids there? Did so many grow up in gangs and end up in prison? And why do so many people on YouTube, content creators, gang members, ex-cons, whatever, why do so many people take pride in their history as gang members? What are they doing today to demonstrate something different? Why, why are not people using their platforms to teach the kids, to reach the kids, to preach to the kids? Instead of perpetuating the same propaganda that's gone on and on and on and on and on. Telling war stories. That does nothing but incite the problem. Do people not understand that when you sit there and you tell your war stories and you reflect back on on those days and you start talking about what you did and what your homies did. You're actually you're actually speaking derogatory, demeaning, and downing those those rival gangs, and it's only going to provoke the worst. Now, when you consider when you consider the Crips, just Rolling Sixties and A Tray, and how they've tried, you know, they've talked and. You know, things are moving in a certain direction or rolling in a certain direction, however you want to call it. That youngsters, very few, then decide, no, we're going to social media bang. We're going to internet bang. We're going to go to the park flashing guns illegally on camera, snitching on ourselves, and, and this is what we're going to do. We don't care what you say. Where's the elders at, man? Where's the where's the where's the father? Where's the mother? Where's the grandparents? Where's the where's the uncles? Where's the aunts at to tell them to stop, dude? It's because those those elders were once that too, and they continue to tell these war stories on here so that they can have a certain claim to fame as being something. Now, why is it that being a gang member, being in prison makes you something? What would lead you to believe that that makes you a man? When, when we all know that by doing those things, we threw our lives away, it was a waste of life. And now innocent people are being targeted for what? You kill a kid, you're a baby killer and you deserve to be stoned. You deserve to die in prison for that. Or you deserve your fate to be instant. Because what kind of person targets innocent people? What kind of what kind of person creates race wars. I think that everybody needs to take an introspective journey and look within themselves and see what they're saying and doing on here. 
because it seems to me that everybody's wrong who continues to go down that path, to, who continues to clout chase, which is chasing the bag on YouTube and using their past to promote themselves in the present. If your reputation precedes you, there's no need to go on about it because not everyone does that. I don't. Until people understand the error of their own ways, then they'll continue to be the blind leading the blind. And this is a problem. It's the blind leading the blind. When, when, when so-called men can't put their name on it, they still use the same name that they, 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 they gain infamy off of in their adolescence when they were throwing their lives away. This is what's being promoted. The same person, only in a different packaging. That's a problem. People pride themselves on being called og or being looked up to for a gang history that they now, that they now want peace over. This is a problem. But until people can open their eyes and see themselves and the error of their own ways and turn from it, but going back to Tortilla Flats and to, and, to, and to what's being done there, I said it before, if you make it a, a race issue, you're drawing in all those people against you. Now, why would any but why would any other Chicano gangs get involved in your problem? Why? You have beef with them. But it's understandable that they would all come together when you're making it about them, you're targeting, you are targeting them. There's no other gangs targeting them. Tortilla Flats is. But that's assuming, and it's an assumption, that they're the ones who've done it. I think, I think that people need to seriously consider law enforcement's role in all this and how they have job security because of the gang violence. And they want to see it. They want to see us killing ourselves. They want to see us committing genocide. And they especially want us to see it, us turn on each other within the black and brown community. Because they realize how close we are to resolving all of this. And coming out of this and standing together in a unified front against the system that has held us down our entire existence here. Who's had, who's had their foot on our neck our entire existence here in this world. They don't wanna see that happen. They don't wanna see any communities having peace and uniting because once there's peace, there's no more gang violence and it's all resolved, then people can then turn their attention towards our government and fighting for our rights. That's the last thing on earth they want. So if they can keep us divided and killing each other over gangs and then further divide us by, by having us kill each other over colors, the color of people's flesh, racial identities, then it becomes even more impossible for us to overcome. And this is a problem. It's time that the righteous stand up and put their foot on the neck of the evil in this world. Because that's outright evil to target innocent people. And I think that I think that everyone, no matter what side you're on, would feel the same way. 
If you're going to do it here, we're going to do it to you. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I'm going to leave you with that. Peace. I'm out.